Active surveillance is an excellent management strategy for men with prostate cancers believed to be of low risk on biopsy. However, in the past, biopsy and risk assessment has been made by blind biopsy of the organ. This blind biopsy method may fail to detect more serious prostate cancers in as many as 40% of men. Therefore, we now present a method for improving active surveillance patient selection by using the new targeted biopsy rather than the older blind biopsy of the prostate. Today, nearly half of all men diagnosed with prostate cancer are low risk. Active surveillance started in the 1990s at centers such as Johns Hopkins and the University of Toronto and is today recognized as an equivalent treatment option for men with low and very low risk disease. However, utilization of active surveillance remains low, under 10% of all risk groups nationwide. This means that over 90% of men undergo surgery, radiation, or primary antiandrogen therapy. There are many barriers to the implementation of active surveillance. From a patient's perspective, these include fear and anxiety over the diagnosis of prostate cancer. From the physician's perspective, there are concerns over accuracy in the diagnosis of cancer, as well as fear over the loss of opportunity for cure. Conventional biopsies for active surveillance cover less than 1% of the prostate, often missing the anterior half. MRI allows visualization of the entire prostate in terms of tissue contrast, blood flow, and cellular disorder imaging. MRI can identify and characterize suspicious areas in the prostate for men undergoing active surveillance and identify any tumor that exists or on the other hand, providing reassurance that the prostate contains no significant cancer. Fusion biopsy begins with the radiologist identifying a region of interest on multi-parametric MRI. Then using a fusion device to merge MRI and ultrasound, then creating the model on which targeted and systematic biopsies are performed. We do this in the clinic under local anesthesia using ultrasound guidance in a manner similar to what urologists have been doing for the past 30 years. The Artemis device allows us to fuse stored MRI images with real-time ultrasound. A 3D reconstructed model of the prostate is created on the fly and the MRI region of interest is brought into the model here. Targeted and mapping biopsies are taken using the familiar spring-loaded gun and 18-gauge needles. The cores are each submitted separately to pathology, and the spatial locations of the cores within the prostate are stored in the device for future recall if necessary. From our experience here at UCLA with over 1,100 Artemis biopsies performed over the past five years, we have learned the procedure can routinely be completed in 15 or 20 minutes, targets are much more likely to contain cancer than systematic sites by a ratio of about three to one or more. Serious cancers missed by conventional biopsy are commonly found with fusion biopsy. And the ability to return to a prior positive spot and rebiopsy it is accurate to within a few millimeters. A traditional active surveillance protocol includes periodic PSA, digital rectal examination, and truss biopsy. At UCLA, we've introduced two key elements to this scheme, multi-parametric MRI and targeted biopsy. Patients with low-risk disease who are enrolled in active surveillance undergo multi-parametric MRI and confirmation biopsy within six months. Both systematic mapping biopsies and targeted biopsies of any suspicious lesions are performed. A second biopsy is performed 12 months later. Since biopsy trajectories are electronically tracked, we are able to retarget prior positive sites. If no progression is observed, biopsy is then repeated every two years. For our initial analysis, we focused on 74 positive biopsy sites taken from 53 men with prostate cancer currently managed with active surveillance. 85% of the biopsies had tumors with Gleason score of 3 plus 3 equals 6. Nearly one-third of positive biopsy sites on the confirmatory biopsy came from abnormal MRI targets of interest as opposed to template-based systematic targets.
Overall, cancer detection rates at the time of the second fusion biopsy showed that 39% of the sites harbored cancer. MRI targets were twice as likely to harbor cancer compared to the systematic targets. We found that Gleason score upgrading was rare at the time of the second biopsy, with only 12% of sites being upgraded to Gleason 7 or 8 disease. Of these upgraded lesions, the majority showed biopsies with Gleason score 3 plus 4 equals 7 cancer. We noted an association between the initial cancer core length and the presence of cancer from sites taken at the time of second biopsy. As you can see here, there was an incremental increase in the proportion of repeat biopsies with cancer as the initial cancer core length increased. The association between cancer core length and the presence of clinically significant cancer, however, at the time of second biopsy was not as consistent. This figure displays the association between the type of target and the presence of any clinically significant or any prostate cancer at the time of second biopsy. Not only was there a greater proportion of cancer among MRI targets, but if present, we found that it was more likely to be clinically significant. Based on our initial assessment of the cancer detection rate, we then performed a post hoc analysis to assess the association between the spatial accuracy of each sampled core with cancer detection. We found 15 cores that, though in the same region, nearly missed the planned biopsy location. Importantly, we found a significantly lower cancer detection rate among these sampled cores as shown here in this figure. In summary, cancer was more likely to be detected in MRI targets as opposed to systematic targets. Furthermore, Gleason score upgrading was rare among this cohort. Larger targets, based on cancer core length, were more likely to harbor cancer on repeat biopsy. Finally, grade 3 to 5 MRI targets were significantly more likely to show clinically significant cancer on repeat fusion biopsy. While further research is clearly needed, our data from UCLA over the past five years strongly indicates that men in active surveillance can be more accurately identified and men with serious cancers can be at more accurately excluded from such a program by the use of the more modern targeted prostate biopsy. Our goal is to select men for active surveillance more carefully, more accurately to identify those who have serious disease earlier and better than with conventional biopsy and to offer the reassurance to men who do not have serious disease that they are appropriate candidates for an active surveillance program.